This right here is the Blackview Tab 16 Pro, an 11 inch Android 14 powered budget tablet that claims, at least on its website, to be the next big thing in terms of, well, everything. Blackview was kind enough to send me a review copy before their official launch and I thought it would be interesting to see if everything they claim on the website as the super new features actually hold up and if this tablet is actually worth it in terms of pricing and speed. And yes, of course, this is a budget tablet coming in at $259 and if you add in some more coupons, it's even cheaper. Coupons are down in the link below. Now for a bit of clarity and my previous experience with tablets and Android. My regular tablet tablet use is primarily work specific. I use an iPad Air 5 with an Apple Pen for frame by frame animation quite regularly and that's actually mostly it. For everything else, being it cutting, editing, relaxing and watching content, the MacBook M1 13 inch is my go to device. So to clarify, I'm not comparing the two tablets since one is four times more expensive than the other. But I'm used to an Apple tablet, so don't get frustrated over me maybe making small comparisons uh, slightly in terms of comfort and performance. Performance. It's not a judge, it's just my experience. Let's start a review with everything you get inside the box. First off, the tablet itself, of course, a protective case which also has a synthetic leather coverage on top which has some open to wake functionality built in, which is quite nice. And I like that you don't have to buy a separate cover as with an iPad. Then you get a regular outlet plug as well as a USB-C cable for charging, a SIM ejector tool and a pen or let's call it stylus hybrid thingy. This is actually the first thing I really want to talk about. Coming from an Apple Pen as my primarily workhorse, this thing is kind of weird and uh, to me rather useless. First off, both sides work as in and out methods on this pen, but the back eraser side is quite finicky and does some weird glitchy movements when using it as your finger replacement. The front has a small weird rounded plastic disc on it and the pen itself isn't really a pen but more of a capacitive touchscreen manipulator. Since this works on all other devices such as my iPhone, my iPad and my Android phone. And lastly, before we get into the tablet, there's also no way to actually comfortably transport the pen with your tablet. There's no place to click it on or insert it in the protective cover and or click it onto the tablet magnetically. But yeah, I guess I'm just used too much to the iPad Air there. Now let's get to the tablet itself and all the promises and features Blackview makes on their website. I had the tablet for roughly two weeks now and used it regularly throughout my day, mostly well for relaxing and watching content on it. I occasionally also tested some games. Before we get into all the features, the tablet had a couple of weird, um, let's call it, bugs I encountered throughout this time frame. Such as it's not actually coming back from going into sleep mode two to three times until you actually connected it to a USB-C power plug. Um, also, the Bluetooth connection to a couple of different earbuds I have was sometimes a bit wonky, but not too often. Other than that, I had no crashes or any other bugs that I encountered in this time frame. Now let's get into the features of the Tab 16 Pro. First off, this is, as said before, an 11 inch tablet coming in at 1200 by 1900 pixels, sort of kind of full HD resolution and an okay screen to bezel size ratio. It's quite uniform on all four sides, which is something I like my devices to be. Now in terms of refresh rate, I couldn't find a definitive spec about it. But what I can say is it's definitely not a 120 Hz display. I suppose this runs at 60 Hz max, maybe even 30, but I'm not sure which is fine for a regular budget tablet, but a bit weird for a tablet with a Pro in its name. On the other hand, when watching content, the display itself feels like it's somehow over sharpened and uses some kind of software processing to actually do this. I know there is an option to make the display have even more contrast, but I turned this off immediately, so this is not that. It's a weird look and does not look natural, especially scrolling through YouTube feels kind of confusing when you do it on two tablets at once. Here's a side by side comparison with my iPad, both of them have been screen recorded, maybe you can actually grasp what I mean by it. 
In terms of brightness, the display can get bright, but I cannot find an official number in terms of nits as well. So I have to guess how much it is when comparing it to the 500 nits peak brightness of the iPad Air. And I'd say the Tab 16 Pro gets almost equally as bright when looking at it directly from the front. In terms of viewing angles, the Tab 16 Pro is kinda meh, okay-ish. As soon as you tilt it slightly, it loses much of its appeal as well as brightness, the blacks get smeary and the contrast of the image is getting quite low. In terms of weight, it's slightly above 500 grams. Now this does not sound like much, but holding this thing for a couple of minutes with one hand while reading something isn't quite the featherlight experience that Blackview claims to their website. Weirdly enough, the iPad Air 5 comes in at 465 grams, but feels much lighter in your hand and is easier to hold and therefore much more well balanced. In terms of build quality and materials used, I really like the Tab 16 Pro. It's a nice laid back design, all buttons are very clicky and made of the same materials as the tablet shell. This, by the way, is the Nightfall grey color variant. The tablet itself is 7.45mm thick, which is quite okay for a budget tablet and in terms of build quality this seems to be quite okay as well, except after using it for two weeks, the tab starts to slightly creak on the edges when, it's, when there's a slight pressure to it. In terms of watching content on the Tab 16 Pro, I have to say that it is Widevine L1 supported. So watching content on your favorite streaming platforms in full HD, such as Netflix, is possible. Blackview has integrated a 7700 milliamp hour battery into the tab as well as 18 watt fast charging. Now this might sound like much but in reality this is just another okay I guess. 18 watts is the lowest amount in terms of fast charging you can get and charging it fully from almost zero to full takes you roughly three hours and a couple of extra minutes. The Nothing Phone 2A for example that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago features a 5000 mAh battery and 45 watt fast charging and takes only 14 minutes to go from zero to full. Now as said before watching content on the Tab 16 Pro is okay and the maximum numbers of hours I could get from it until it ran out of juice was 5 hours tops. Watching two 20 minute YouTube videos took roughly 15% of the total battery life of the device. So in total I say the battery life is fine for the total cost of the device. What's also important when using your tablet as a media consumption device is of course the sound. Blackview added dual speakers to the Tab 16 Pro and they claim that these are fine tuned to extract as much detail as possible. I tried them with my own YouTube videos since I mastered these and know how they actually should sound. And I have to say. Yeah, I'm fine with the speakers. They do lack quite a lot in the bass, but in terms of loudness and clarity, they are fine. I can clearly understand myself and also get the background music. Most of the sound is pushed in the mids, the highs are fine. So in total, I'd say these are a good pair of stereo speakers inside of a budget tablet. Next up, we have a pre-installed WPS suite for office works. And in my opinion, this is quite okay to use all the basic functions like writing a document, doing a basic presentation and more. There's nothing to complain here, but also not much to talk about. A bit more to complain is the integrated cameras, both on the front and the back side. Let's start with the front one. This is an 8 megapixel camera and it's probably mainly used for doing some online meeting in Zoom and more. I don't think anyone is using this as a selfie cam for Instagram snapshots or so since the quality is yeah. Now the images posted on the website promise you the best contrast and most natural look you can imagine. But let's be honest, this is an 8 megapixel 720p cam, so this is what it actually looks like in reality. But the front camera also unlocks something that I would not have expected, but it's some it's some kind of face unlock of the device. And it works also okayishly. You need to be really, really still one to two seconds until it recognizes your face. A small bump with your hand and you need to actually redo it. And let's get to the backside camera as well. And yes, I meant camera as in singular camera. There are two camera bumps on the Blackview Tab 16 Pro and two glass housings staring back at you. But uh, only the upper one is an actual lens, albeit a very tiny one. The other one is fake in my opinion, even though Blackview says this is a 2 megapixel depth camera, which is virtually, let's call it useless, since most of the fake background blur around portraits are done via software these days. Oh, and there's also an integrated flash. Hmm. If you look closely, all the bumps and glass and rings around the thing is nothing but smoke and mirrors. Lens itself is one of the cheapest and tiniest sensors I've ever seen. 
in a device. Henceforth the image quality which is more than lacking. Here are a few shots and then also a few shots taken with an old iPhone 6 in comparison. Let's see if you can find out which one is actually which. Next up on our list we have the processor and the speed of the tablet and how fast it can chuck through your operations, the games, browsing and playback in total. Blackview says this is an octa-core Unisoc Tiger T616 processor which is 5300-415 higher than its predecessor. The thing is I don't know what exactly the measurement is that Blackview is using here so this could either be much more or barely anything. So my curiosity was peaked and I went on a google adventure searching for some reference points that I could work with and of course it was the M1 processor inside of the iPad Air 5. Since I know how this feels, how it runs and how it performs. And I found a website that lets you compare the two and um, holy shit <laughs> this is quite a difference. First off the Tiger processor is a 12 nanometer chip, the M1 a 5 nanometer chip. For your explanation the smaller the number the more efficient and the better. And this is quite sta a staggering difference when it comes to performance in single and multi-core scores. The Antutu score that measures the different performances like CPU, GPU, the RAM and other things gives the Tiger processor 275,697 points which is roughly in the same ballpark as what Blackview claimed. And uh, the M1 has 1.7 million. So it's 520% more powerful than the chip used in the Tab 16 Pro and when looking at GPU scores it gets even wilder. The 16 Pro has 463 points while the M1 gets 17,000 and a couple. 3588% more powerful. What does this mean in terms of real life performance for the Tab 16 Pro? Scrolling through the menus isn't as fast. Sometimes things haven't fully loaded when you scroll to it. The menus always take some time to open. Apps tend to take quite a while to boot up and some of them also take a while when scrolling or using them. And of the five games I tested over the last week or so, three did not even begin booting up and when they did all of them crashed on the home screen. Stardew Valley which was released in 2015 was the only one that was running fine and without any hiccups. As a gaming platform I don't know if I would say that this is the tablet you should get. No I think this isn't the tablet you should get. But what about all the other situations like buying it for streaming content, watching YouTube as an example. It's fine in my opinion. You can definitely use it as a consumption device on its own. The screen is good enough for this and the sound is also okay. Now when it comes to productivity and as soon as it goes over writing emails and simple tasks such as creating a presentation, this device falters due to the lack of performance. And as far as gaming goes, at least with the titles I tested, I did not have much fun using it as a gaming tool. The things that worked worked, but nothing more. The higher end graphically more intense games are no fun at all when the device can barely chuck along at 18 frames or so, swallowing your battery life along the way. As an entry level android tablet it's fine, but for everything that needs a bit more power I would go for another device for a bit more budget invested that really deserves the pro tech in the name. As always my name is Leech and I'm off writing the next scripts. If you enjoyed this video then make sure to subscribe to this channel. There are plenty more of this type of content and many other things available for you to watch. Have a great day, see you around and goodbye.